The title of this story is called My Father. It was June 1966, and I was 13, year old, 13 years old at the time, and this happened in Vancouver, British Columbia. And my house uh, was situated right by a park, and um, my brother and his friend and I were playing at this park, and uh, we had noticed that a fire truck had come around the corner and parked right between our house and our neighbor's house. And of course we were, weren't sure what was going on and we were curious, uh, so we decided to walk over to the house and uh, we had noticed that our father was being taken away to the hospital and my mother was out at the time. So myself and my siblings uh, were looked after by our neighbors until my grandma uh, got to the house to look after us. And then my mom came home later that uh, evening and explained to us what had happened. And she explained that my father was painting the house on the outside and had two ladders uh, situated in front of each other with a wooden slat laying on the rungs of each opposing ladder. And it was connected to the ladder by a wire on either side. And this wire had come loose and the wooden slat had separated and my father had fallen and hit his head quite bad. And uh, he, my father was in a coma for, for about a week and it was a Thursday night at the time and my mom had told us that we could go and visit my father the next morning. So I was very excited about that. So the next morning um, I was walking down the stairs to the main room and uh, my sister was just walking up the stairs and she was absolutely crying, bawling and uh, I felt there was something not quite right. So as I walked down the stairs into the main room and I saw my mother, she had told me that my father had passed away. And I was saddened and shocked. Um, and I just think about my father back then. And um, my mother did remarry and she was married for 22 years. But I, I miss my father quite a bit because he took us uh, out camping uh, we learned so much about the province of British Columbia, and I really thank my father for those experiences. We're here today to have the discussion if we should separate from, from Quebec. And what I'm hearing from you guys is that we don't want to. And when I, when, when I speak with deaf Canadians um, as well in Quebec, that they want to stay as part of Canada as well. And so we're all on the same page. But why are the politicians still arguing about this? Grassroots Canadians, the ones that are speaking out, um, are showing that we want to continue on with Canada as one. So why are the politicians not representing us? And that's one of the struggles I have. Also, many times we share our concerns to the government and we never get that two-way communication. So we share our concerns, we don't hear anything back. And if we do get an answer back, it's often very vague. And it seems to be the trend. So we vote for a government official, but you know, and they don't do anything for us. What does that mean? It uh, doesn't matter if it's, a P, if it's PC, Liberal, or NDP. All those political parties, they don't provide interpreting services, captioning, and really not it's not accessible for deaf Canadians. And that limits our political knowledge. Also, the grandmother passing on the tradition and the values of the deaf culture and the deaf people so that it can be brought down to their children. I'd like to briefly talk to you now about the bilingual bicultural philosophy here at MSD. Bilingual bicultural program provides an early language acquisition and helps facilitate the development of two languages, American Sign Language and English. For most of the children here, the main means of communication is ASL.
Hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Bill Purcell. And I'm a pastor at the Deaf Church here in Edmonton. Alberta, Canada. We are here to celebrate the life of Leonard Mitchell. Len was very, very special. He touched many, many people's hearts. Deaf people, hard of hearing people, people who could hear, people around the world with different cultures and different languages. He traveled all over the world for many years. He really was a gentleman. He was a great businessman, a great husband, and Christine and he were together for 38 years. As you know, Len was ill with GBS, Gillian Barr syndrome. He was ill for two years and he could have got better if that was God's wish. But God had better plans for him. So God took him home and now he is not in pain anymore. He is not suffering. I know that sometimes we don't understand why, but we just need to trust in the Lord and know that he knows best. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding, your own intelligence, your own logic to try and find the answers. Depend on the Lord and his wishes, and he will show you the best way. That was Len's favorite verse. He loved that verse. So let us pray. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time for us to be born, and a time for us to die. So when we journey together in the celebration of Len's life, we rejoice knowing that you are the resurrection of the life and the life. So we shall not mourn this day because you promise to wipe away every tear from our eyes. We celebrate their life and pray that your light shall continue to shine upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
This message is from CCSD, Canadian Cultural Society of the Deaf. I am the current president. My name is Vincent Chauvet. On behalf of past and present board members of CCSD, we want to show our appreciation for Len and for his time with us, for his amazing leadership and as a role model across Canada. Len served as vice president and as president for a period of time for CCSD. I had to take a step back as president and Len was more than happy to jump in and take over as intern president. The board wishes to thank Len for his time that he has given up for us and for Canadians, for supporting our goals and for his activism. Again, on behalf of past and current board members, we acknowledge the many years of service at both the national and international level. He was involved in the World Federation of the Deaf for a very long time and is well recognized by international leaders for his generosity. At this time, we recognize that Len is in heaven and has gone to a better place. Probably enjoying a nice cup of coffee, sitting with former Canadians, and leaders talking about past and present experiences. We are going to miss Len's leadership, activism, and generosity. Thank you. Hello, my name is Deb Russell, and I've been a longtime friend of Len and Christine. I want to begin by thanking Christine for asking me to share some of my memories and my experiences with Len. The first time I met Len would have been the early 1980s. At that time, Len had moved to Edmonton. He was working for the Association for Hearing Handicapped, AHH, as it was known at that time. He ran a program at a group home known as Lauderdale House. That house was very special and it fit Len to a T. It served deaf people who had additional disabilities, who had never experienced living in the community, had never experienced home life. They had been raised in institutional care. And Len ran this great program for them. I was immediately drawn to Len's kindness, his big heart, his ability to laugh when life went slightly sideways his ability to find solutions. It was just so easy to get along with Len. And he hired staff who had very similar personality traits to his own. So he brought on Pippa, and later on, he brought on Christine. At that time, I remember Len being a little bit shy, but Christine wasn't at all shy. And the two of them struck up a friendship and started to go out as friends. And those of us who were watching saw this friendship deepen and turn to love. I was really fortunate. Len and Christine asked Stuart, my husband and I, if we would be witnesses during that first wedding ceremony. And we said, yes, of course. The wedding took place and we went out to celebrate at a restaurant. Those of you who are from Edmonton might remember that Hawaiian restaurant that used to be on Jasper Avenue called the Tiki Tiki. So at that restaurant, we so enjoyed the evening. I look back fondly on the laughter, the dancing, the fun that was had. And I think Stu and I left the restaurant that night and both of us predicted that these two were going to have a very long, happy life full of laughter and I think full of happy adventures. When I think about Len, I would describe him as a rare gem. He was a natural leader. He had that ability to listen to people, to encourage people to see it from different points of view. 
he could analyze a situation and see it in a completely new perspective. He also had that ability to bring people to consensus, to come to agreement on issues. He spent hours of his own volunteer time supporting the deaf community. He first joined the Edmonton Association of the Deaf, EAD. He served as their president. As time went on, he moved on to serve the Alberta Association of the Deaf, AAD, as their president. And at the same time, Len encouraged me to take on the president's role within our interpreters chapter, known as ACRID. That gave me an opportunity to watch Len, learn from his leadership style. I admired his work. And in many ways, I think the two of us grew in our leadership journeys. Later on, Len joined the Canadian Association of the Deaf, sharing his experience, his wisdom, his talent at the national level. And at the same time, I joined as the AVLIC president, which gave us an opportunity to work closely together again. Len was tremendously supportive of the interpreting community. He wanted good interpreters and he expected the quality to raise. So he served as the CAD rep and Linda Cundy as the CCSD rep. And the two of them came on to the AVLIC committee to create the national certification system, spending hours and hours of their own time. But that was Len. He was always willing to give his time to serve the deaf community. As his experience grew later on, he served at the world, the international level, joining the World Federation of the Deaf and their board. I think he began in 1995 and he served until 2007. During that time, Len visited over 40 countries, 40 different countries, which was not a holiday, I would point out. Len was presenting he was teaching workshops. He was supporting local deaf organizations, all with the goal of improving deaf education, raising awareness of human rights, linguistic rights. Len was committed to the community. His heart, his passion, all of that served to focus on equality. And in those early years, hearing people view deaf people as disabled, but Len, took a counter perspective. And he was able to teach, not in a harsh way ever, but through his ability to weave a narrative, he could help people to see, oh, we're talking really about human rights. We're talking about linguistic rights and come to accept his perspective. That was his expertise. He gave so many presentations over the years. He attended the Canadian Judges Conference and at that time, I remember when he was the CAD president and I was Av the AVLIC president, he wanted to make sure that the courts were committed to hiring qualified legal interpreters, which meant he was willing to go to those law conferences to speak to judges, to speak to lawyers about the importance of interpreting. Len was always calm. I never saw him lose his temper. That just was not his way. And even though he served so many years at the international level on the WFD board, after 2007, he still attended those conferences going to WFD and going to WASLI, the World Association of Sign Language Interpreters. He actually encouraged me to be part of WASLI. And he came to our conferences as well. The last WASLI conference he was at was Paris. 2019, I look back and think he was with us. And I will always see Len as a big piece of my heart. In my mind, I will always remember his ability to never complain. The last two years were not easy for Len. And I think for all of us, we were struck by, we never saw him lose his temper. We never saw him grumpy. We never saw him complain. He was compassionate towards others. He was polite. He was positive. I think the doctors and nurses were just shocked at how much a body could endure and still 
have so much positive energy. And that was Len. During the last two years, many people from around the world, deaf people, interpreters, many people recognized Len. They recognized his gifts, his expertise, his warmth, his intelligence, the list goes on. All of us from around the world will miss Len. But Len, my memories of you will be in my heart forever. Thank you. I love you. Hello, my name is John Graham. I am the pastor of New Life Deaf Church. I want to share a story about Len Mitchell and his wife, Christine. Both of them are a really cool couple. I've known both of them for many, many years. At that time, they were living in Winnipeg, and they invited me to speak, and I was in their home, sharing together and eating, and very cool, wonderful people. Len was involved in the board of the World Deaf Association. I met him in Montreal, Canada, in Spain, met him, and I saw the many things he did, and very much to advocate for deaf rights. He was a wonderful role model for the deaf community. At the banquets, uh, he would eat, and I saw the end of the role of master of ceremonies. He was control of the banquet and the speaking, and see, saw that he has the skill to organize and plan, humor, and bring everything together, just to laugh, to really enjoy. Wonderful skill, I saw that. And then, then and Christine moved to Edmonton, and we hit both COVID, and he asked me if they could join our Zoom church service. I said, sure, welcome to come. They were involved, faithful to all, eager to be involved and love the Lord. Then his body was hit with sickness. Then contact me, please pray for me and pray for my body. And we prayed, and we prayed, getting worse, getting worse. sign of his body and his body. Still, still, he was faithful to come for the Zoom church service. I told him, you don't have to you don't have to get your own He said, no, I want to be involved. I want to be involved in my and like everyone, everyone else, else, like everyone else, very humble, very humble, and suffer, and suffer, suffer so much pain, so much pain, and not and one to complain, one to complain. But he would just but hold, he on just hold on to Jesus, hold on to Jesus, hold it on for two years. For two years. Then it was time. Then it was time for him to go home with the Lord, home with heaven. the Lord to heaven. So beautiful, 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 beautiful role model. Beautiful role model. How to face of suffering, of suffering does still, still persevere. persevere. I want to share with you. I want to share with you. Revelation, from Revelation, from chapter twenty-one, verse says, four says, "He, he will, will wipe away every, wipe tear, away every tear from our eyes." From our eyes. There will be no more, be no more sadness, sadness crying or crying or pain, because, pain all because all the old has been passed away. Passed away. That body, of, that pain body of pain and, and suffering I saw, frustration, frustration and but now we'll hold, on, now to we'll hold on to Jesus. He's our hope. Also and also gives Jesus gives us eternal, us eternal, eternal life. I know that everything is temporary, but we hold on and finally that one day go home to heaven. No more pain, no more crying, no more suffering or sadness. The pain is gone. My body is left, but gone to be with the Lord in heaven. We're going to miss you, Len. We love you. Hello again. I'm Pastor Bill speaking today. You've watched many good stories about Len's life what he has done for the deaf community, locally, nationally, as well as internationally. As a pastor, I visited him in hospital. I can tell you, his mind was totally alert. 
he used his left arm to sign to me. He asked me, how are you? He was, I was so surprised. He was so calm and relaxed. I said, I'm fine, thank you. I was just so impressed that he asked me. Normally, if nothing, like nothing has, was happening. And then I said to him, are you ready to meet God? And his answer was, yes, I'm ready. I'm not afraid. Wow. Bless him. So I'm asking you, are you ready to meet God? Whether you're in good health or in sickness, if you're not ready, now is a good time to become ready. Why do I say this? The world is not getting any better, as you can see. It's getting worse and worse. So you can understand what I'm saying. The Bible says, be ready for the Son of Man, the Messiah, Christ Jesus, is coming at an hour that you do not expect. You know, so don't wait and don't think that it's not going to happen. We cannot predict the future. Len was ready. He is now in a much better place called heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we say goodbye to Len Mitchell. We grieve because we will not see him again. Nevertheless, we celebrate because we know he is enjoying your presence right now. No more pain, no more suffering. We rejoice because we know that he is safe and at peace. You have welcomed Lend into glory and freed him from all physical frailties and all mental and emotional struggles. Thank you for your wonderful gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we close, may all these good thoughts be an encouragement for everyone who is watching today. And as we celebrate Len's life, we have good memories of him, pictures and stories that will continue forever, day and night. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, my name is Christine. I'm Len's wife. I want to talk to you about uh, what GBS means. Many people don't know. It's a new disease. And the full name is Guillain-Barr Syndrome. And we have the acronym GBS for it. And this disease um, it's a, a newish disease. It really only started about 15 years ago where people started to get GBS. It's a virus and it just enters the body and it eats at the nervous system. So the nerves are like a wire and it eats the nerves. It eats the lining of the nerves and it's like a fire. 
it's kind of like frostbite. You know how you're cold outside, but really hot inside, and it can affect your hands, your whole body. Um, and when GBS first, uh, Len, when Len first got it, he couldn't control his legs, and then it continued up to the neck down, and he was paralyzed. And it got worse from there. For the last two years, miracles did happen. He deteriorated really quickly, and then he improved. He could move his left hand. His right hand he couldn't, but his left hand he could move. And he got better. He went to rehab. He started to be able to eat. And he had an electric wheelchair that he could drive himself. And then in July, last year, he was able to come home. And then after two months, he deteriorated. He had a huge relapse again. They took him to the hospital. Um, and then he, he rallied again. And he went into long-term care, but he couldn't stay at home. He was bedridden, but he did improve. And then they took him to the hospital because he was having lung issues. They had to resuscitate him four times. Um, and from then on, it just got worse and worse and worse. It was like a domino effect where it just hit all over his lungs. There was infection and it was all over his lungs. So for two years, Len went through this, but through the two years, he was nothing but positive. He was so patient. People at the hospital, nurses, doctors, just loved him. They never saw him angry. They always saw him being positive. You know, he would always have a thumbs up. He would always be polite. He would always say thank you. He taught me so much about patience. You know, I would want to say something and he'd say, no, no, don't say that. You know, I'd want to talk about too much medication. He's like, no, no, just leave it. Leave it be. Just calm down. He really taught me about patience. He was so calm. He influenced so many people. And, you know, at Bible studies in the morning and the afternoon and church, people would watch him people who had experienced maybe some minor illness and was they were complaining and then they'd see what Len was going through and his patience and his perseverance. He had a quality, a character, the nine fruits of the spirit. He had patience, control, happiness, peace. He had all of them. He had every single one of those characters. He was just a shining light. Everyone loved him. When you met him, you felt connected to him right away. What he did in hospital is exactly what he did for WFD, the World Federation for the Deaf. His attitude, his personality was exactly how he acted in the hospital. He was so helpful. And, you know, he would show, like the nurses, how to cut his nails, for example, or um, you know, they'd say, are you in pain? And he'd say, no. And he'd say, they'd say, are you breathing okay? And he'd go, yes, I'm fine. And they were just amazed by him, really. They, they were amazed. And the reason being is that he had strong faith. He fought, he fought with faith. And through it all, he still became, he became weak, but he continued to fight. Many deaf people chatted with him through FaceTime while he was in the hospital, and they admired him greatly. You know, they, they'd say, he'd say, hi, how are you? It wasn't about him. He would always ask about the other person, and he'd pray for other people. He'd pray for the doctors. He'd pray for people in the hospital. And the doctor said, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. And he said, you know, how is, how is Len so strong? And Len just pointed up to God and so calm. And the doctor said, I am just honored to meet him as the people at the World Federation of the Deaf were so honored to be with him in his calmness. God 
is our source. And he continued to pray for the doctors. And then, just before he passed away, I said to him, are you ready to go? And he said, yes. I said, are you afraid? And he said, no. And I needed to learn to let go. He's in a better place in heaven. He is not in any pain anymore. He's a born-again Christian. He spoke about it, and he wanted to let people know that the, the one way to heaven is to be born again. That Jesus has said, you come through him for life and have faith through Jesus Christ. So that's John 14, verse 6. You know Jesus. He went through this experience for two years with Jesus, and he felt Jesus' presence. He felt Jesus touch him all over, and he felt at peace. He felt his love. He felt him in the room, as I did too. He was a wonderful husband, an amazing friend, really my best best friend. I love him. He's taught me so much as he's taught so many people. And the nurse, the nurses said that when he left, when he died, they really missed him. He, he showed the light. He showed the light to other people. Everyone looked up and respected Len. I got so many cards and I cried through them and they were all consistent in their message. How kind he was, how influential he was, how down to earth he was, what a great listener he was. World Federation of the Deaf, when he went there, everyone just took to him right away. He really showed people respect. And I really want to thank Len for his wonderful work. God is in a better place. It says so in the book of life. And he's in heaven now. <laughs>